I'm transforming this cardboard shadow box into a 19th century kitchen and that starts with a faux tin ceiling, cereal box wood panel walls, and rustic wood flooring. I'm using this vintage faux tin ceiling I got at my local dollhouse store for $3. I made this template by tracing the ceiling onto cereal box and I actually did that before assembly because it's a lot easier to get an accurate measurement before you put the walls in. I intentionally cut the ceiling a little bit too big and then trimmed it to the perfect size with my scissors. I'm decorating this room box to look like a section of rustic kitchen from an 1800s cabin, so I want the ceiling to look nice and old. To start the aging process, I applied black paint using a pouncing motion to get it into the texture and detail of the ceiling. Then I rubbed away most of the black paint using a damp paper towel. The paint came off the highest points first, and with a little more effort, I was able to get it out of some of the deeper areas. To give it a more natural appearance, I made sure to remove the paint more in some areas than others so it wouldn't be evenly aged all the way across. For some more variation in tone, I stippled on some tan colored paint. This faux tin ceiling is only paper, but it still has a shiny metallic finish, so using this paint helped create some dull areas. Next, I added a black wash, followed by a brown wash. The washes I use are just watered down acrylic paint. When you apply a wash, the water evaporates, leaving the paint pigment behind. I like to apply my wash in an uneven manner, and I really like adding a brown tone as well as the black, just for additional aging and interest. I didn't think of it while I was doing this project, but I also could have added an orange wash for rusty spots. Sometimes I use a paper towel to remove some of the wash after I apply it, but in this case I left it on there to dry. When the wash dries, you can see the nice variation between the brown and the black. I finished the ceiling with some dirty down rust, which is a really cool chemical treatment that makes real rust. It's really easy to use, I just apply it with a paintbrush and then I rinse the paintbrush afterward in water. I applied the rust sparingly, concentrating on the deeper portions of the tin ceiling design and around the edges. This room box will eventually have a really old looking stove in it, so I'm assuming the rust was created from the steam coming off the cooking pots. Now that the ceiling is done, it's time to move on to the walls. For the walls, I wanted to create the look of wood paneling, so I'm using strips of cereal box. You could use a ruler and an X-Acto knife to cut these, but I used my new paper cutter. I cut my strips of cereal box in multiple sizes, so I would have wider pieces and thinner pieces. And just an FYI, whenever I say cereal box, I just mean the chipboard paper packaging that food arrives in, so it could be a cracker box or whatever else you have on hand. I didn't make a template for the walls before assembly, so to cut these to the appropriate length, I laid them in the space and folded the top and bottom where it reached the ceiling and the floor and used a combination of my X-Acto knife or scissors to cut them to length. And then I used hot glue to apply them. No matter what glue you choose to use, make sure you get good coverage because later when you paint this, it'll bubble and warp wherever it's not attached to the backdrop. Then I continued with my paneling look on the side wall, choosing different widths and leaving a small gap between each of the boards. To make a tidy corner, I added the back piece first before adding the two final pieces for the wall. I finished off the paneling by choosing varying widths, making sure I applied adequate glue and leaving a small gap between each board. To paint the walls, I used a combination of white, matte Mod Podge, and tan. 
When I applied the paint, I didn't have to worry about getting it on the floor and ceiling since I haven't installed them yet, so I would definitely do the walls first if you're taking this kind of approach or you'll have to mask off your ceiling and floor to protect them. I'm giving my boards a whitewashed look, but you could also choose a completely different approach by applying a black coat first and dry brushing brown over it to give the look of 1970s wood paneling. As the paint dried, there were a couple areas where the cereal box started pulling away from the cardboard because I hadn't glued it enough, and I fixed it just by adding some more glue and pressing it down. Once the paint completely dried, I used some chalk pastels for aging. I'm adding a fireplace down at the bottom, so this is the area I chose to use to start testing the color of the chalk pastels. I started with brown and thought it was a little too light, so I went in with some black instead. In the 1800s, people used coal and wood to both heat their homes and cook their food, so I added some soot around the ceiling. I mostly used a black chalk pastel, but I also used some brown. I worked in small sections at a time and used a damp paper towel to rub at the chalk pastels to get rid of any paintbrush lines and pick up the natural texture in the cereal box. The cereal box naturally has these horizontal lines that ended up really looking like wood. This looks darker on camera than it is in real life, but I did concentrate my aging in the corner where the stove goes and did less on the other side of the room. When I'm aging a miniature, I like to think of where the grime would naturally accumulate and try to make the aging interact with the environment and make sense for the space. With the walls complete, I'm moving on to the wood floor. I got this amazing bundle of stained wood for $1 at my local dollhouse store. I chose these beautiful wooden planks for making my floor and to make some of them narrower, I cut them in half with my utility knife and sanded the edges. I'll be using a combo of wide pieces and these narrow pieces. This is my cereal box template of the floor. To save material, I'll only be applying wood to the area that isn't covered by the egg carton stone hearth I'll be creating for the stove to sit on. To get started, I placed my first board and traced around it. Then I flipped the template over, making sure the board was in the right spot and marked a line so I can cut the correct angle. I'm not sure what kind of wood this is, but it wasn't easy to cut. I ended up using a combination of my utility knife, miter shears, and even my small X-Acto saw. I used hot glue to install the wood and used narrow boards for the front row. When I was dry fit testing the second row, I realized I could see the chipboard through a small gap, so I colored it in with a black marker. I used another narrow board for the second row, but then I switched things up by adding a wide board to the right of it. This style of using different width boards is called random width flooring, and I really think it gives a rustic look. I finished the rest of the flooring by drawing black lines between the gaps, choosing different widths and color tones. And remember I left an empty spot in the middle which will eventually be covered by a faux stone hearth that the stove will sit on. I'm the kind of miniaturist who likes to save creative energy and time by not decorating areas that will eventually be covered and I also like to save material by not putting it in places where it'll eventually be covered up. To install the floor, I started by only applying a bead of hot glue to the back. The front of the room box will eventually be covered in wooden trim, so I'm attaching the floor to make it the same height as the top of the wooden trim. To help support the floor, I added strips of cardboard. Elevating the wooden floor prevents it from being covered up by the wooden frame, and it also changes the angle by making the floor more level. After I installed the floor, I used more hot glue to attach the tin ceiling. I got the rest of these wooden bundles for a dollar each at my local dollhouse store, and I'm using some of this blue crown molding to finish off the ceiling. 
I started by cutting some angles into this back piece and dry fit it. Then I used my pencil to approximately mark where I should cut so the two pieces will meet one another neatly without having to do any angle finding or complicated math. It only took two tries to get the correct angle and then I cut it to length and glued it in place. Watch this video to learn how to make your own cardboard rim box and make sure you subscribe so you can see the finished project. 